guys, it's Kevin again, and um, in this video, I'm going to review the um, latest uh, special that was just went off Disney Channel, Phineas and Ferb, Mission Marvel. Um, I know this is probably going to sound like a childish review or whatever, but you know what? I mean, Disney Channel, you guys know, I don't watch Disney Channel a lot anymore. I've only watched the Teen Beach movie, and rarely, this is very rare, rarely do I watch Good Luck Charlie. Um, but, when I heard about this special, and you know, Phineas and Ferb is a show that I'll watch. I actually really do like it, and there are a lot of reasons why. One, it's very intelligent, and I'll get to all the reasons why I like it, but, one, I was watching Teen Beach, which is actually a big bit on DVD. When I was watching it for the first time, uh, they showed an um, ad for Phineas and Ferb Mission Marvel, and it was definitely looked like a very interesting concept to me. It was definitely something that I wanted to uh, watch, so I tried. I watched it today, and I have to say that it definitely wasn't perfect. I don't think it was. Yeah, I mean, I do think it was really, really good, but it wasn't perfect. There were a few problems I had with it, um, and I will get to that. But let's first talk about the um, the special overall. Um, the main plot, of course, has to do with Phineas and Ferb are in space basically and um while they're in space and everything um the they're where um in new york city the avengers and spider-man are there and basically um they are um dr doofensmurf basically makes um mention that he ba and basically he makes the invention and actually works but the downfall is that it makes all the Marvel superheroes lose their powers. Um, now, first of all, a lot of people, and basically they go over to Phineas and Ferb and they have to try to help them get their powers back. And that's basically the plot to stop the supervillains and all that stuff. There are some subplots, one that's really funny that, there, that I want to talk about, but one of the things that a lot of people have been saying is that this movie, this, uh, movie, I'm gonna call it a movie because it's really not a regular Phineas and Ferb episode, it's over an hour, um, I mean, no, it's not over an hour, it's, o it's just over, um, 50 minutes, it's 55 minutes, um, so I'm gonna call it a movie, um, but this movie basically, um, thing that I, I, a lot of people have been saying is that it's not accurate to the comic books. Guys, this is a children's television show. I don't think they're going to have Iron Man die. People are like, Iron Man should die if they lost his powers. Uh, Peter Parker should still have his powers because it doesn't count. The Hulk should go back to Bruce Banner. It's supposed to be a different universe. Don't you understand? Disney's Marvel Universe is different. So stop saying that. That was not the problem I had with it. So we'll get to the problem with it. Um, let's first talk about some of the things I really, really liked about it. First of all, um, one of the things I really liked was that um, um, they had a lot of uh, references to other Marvel um, movies. Like, for example, one of my favorite parts was when they saw Perry the Platypus. And um, Spider-Man's basically, and um, they're basically like, um, who's that? And he says, is that Howard the Duck? And then, and then the Hulk looks at him like, Howard the Duck? And obviously that's really funny because it's a Marvel reference. There are so many Marvel references scattered throughout this. It was like hilarious. And then Buford um, was the one that was uh, making all the silly what, superhero references. Like, um, let's see, he was saying all of the basic superhero lines. I, I can't remember all what the, all of them were, but you know, that was really funny. And um, yeah, so I really like that stuff. I really thought that was great. But let's first talk about it. Basically, once they get to Phineas and Ferb, they basically are um, trying to help them. But Candace is actually a very big fan of the superheroes. And I liked seeing a different side of Candace in this. We kind of saw her trying to help rather than trying to bust the boys. Because you know what? Candace can sometimes get really annoying to me. I, I really like Ashley Tisdale. I think she's a great actress. She does a very good job as Candace, but, um, you know, as the voice of Candace, but she can sometimes get annoying. So it was cool to see her not um, trying to bust them, trying to help them, 
get superhero powers back. I never guessed that Candace was a fangirl, so I liked the way that was done. That was very unpredictable, and I really did like it, so that was very good. Um, but basically, she's basically just causing all kinds of havoc and trouble, and she really isn't doing the right stuff. So yeah, uh, that's what that was. That basically is what's happened with her. Um, in the meantime, the super villains are with Doctor Doofenshmirtz, and this is where I mainly had my main problems with the super villains. Now I understand that they were basically trying to combine three TV shows, three of their most successful cartoons. Disney XD was. You know, because this is Disney Hell and Disney XD, basically. Um, excuse <coughs> me. This is basically three of their most successful TV shows. Uh, Phineas and Ferb, Ultimate Spider-Man, and The Avengers Assemble. The problem I had with this, though, was Red Mist. I don't think he should have been the main villain here, because I, Red Mist is Captain America's villain. Yes, I know I said... It's not going to follow it, but I did find that very annoying to me. Um, I think they should not have had Spider-Man there. I think Captain America should have been there. In my opinion, Spider-Man felt very out of place here. He was very in this, but he felt very out of place with the Avengers. I mean, yes, he eventually does join the Avengers, but it felt very out of place, and it kind of just felt like they were trying to get the most popular superhero. Of course, they had to get Spider-Man in there, because everyone loves Spider-Man, but I don't think he fit with them, and especially having Red Mist. I don't, I don't need to see him trying to battle Red Mist. That's Captain America's villain. I found that very distracting. Then you had Venom, who is not an Avengers villain, and I just found this very annoying that this worked out the way it did. If they wouldn't have had Red Mist, then I would not have been as annoyed. But Red Mist is Captain America's villain. That's who Captain America's main villain is. That's who he fights. I don't know why they had Red Mist here. If they would have just gotten rid of Red Mist, then I would have been fine. But that was a problem for me. Um, I will say that I didn't realize how good Dr. Doofensmurf would fit in with these uh, supervillains. Of course, he's always comic relief and stuff in the show, but um, he was very funny in this. I thought he did a very good job. Of course, Stan and Swampy are always good with this stuff, um, so I think he was fantastic in this. Um, so yeah, that was definitely really good. My biggest, um, so yeah, my biggest problem, of course, had to do with Red Mist. Um, but I will talk about the very, the subplots, which are very funny. Um, first of all, I love the little subplot with Candace and Isabella. Um, first of all, the song, oh my god, only trying to help. That's like the best song Phineas and Ferb has ever done, besides Summer Belongs to you. I mean, Summer Belongs to you is always going to be my favorite episode, and my favorite songs are in all my favorite turn that episode. I always love the music they do. That's the thing I love about Phineas and Ferb, is the music. Even though you could say it's a kiddie show, and that's a, it's for kids, the one thing you can say is they make kick-ass music. They really do. Their music is amazing. And you can't say that their music is not, that it's not well done, because it very, really is well done. It's amazing music. It always has different styles. This was definitely like a rock song. It was definitely done really, really well. I thought both Allison Stoner and Ashley Tisdale were amazing, especially the harmonies. I think this is the first time they've, we, they've ever done a duet, and I think they should definitely do more. Um, I, they're both big Disney Channel people, Allison Stoner and Ashley Tisdale are both great. Um, so yeah, I think that definitely was definitely a major um, plus was that song. That song, in my opinion, was the best part. As far as the fight scenes go, I thought the fight scenes were very well done. The problem I had with this was that it was a bit rushed. Uh, see, they had a Mickey Mouse cartoon on after, and I did watch the Mickey Mouse cartoon. I liked it. It was funny. It was good for what it was. But they felt a bit rushed. I felt like this would have been better if it was an hour and a half. If this was an hour and a half, then I think it could have been a little bit better. We could have a little bit more development, but I did think there was enough in there that was actually really good. So, overall grade for the special, I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. I definitely did enjoy a lot. Of, oh, oh, I forgot to talk about one of my other favorite parts. Major Monogram. 
trying to be just like, um, oh my god, what's his name? Nick Fury. Him trying to be just like Nick Fury and him having the eye patch and then the mustache. That was hilarious. That was very well done and that was very funny. So that was really good. Um, that was definitely a very good um, part of it. So I definitely like that too. Um, so overall great, 9.5 out of 10. Really enjoy myself throughout this. Um, and I thought it was very, very good. It definitely was very entertaining. It was very well done. Yes, it didn't accurately portray the superheroes, but I thought it was well done. So let me know what you guys thought of this special. Did you feel like Red, uh, Red Skull didn't need to be there? I felt like he really ruined it with the villain part because it really just felt like Red Skull is Captain America's villain. Why isn't Captain America here? Do you think Spider-Man fit in with the rest of them? Honestly, I didn't think Spider-Man fit in as much. I thought he was good, but he didn't fit in with the other villains. It just felt like a completely different type of show since it was three different shows. Um... My, did you love that? Did you love the song? Only trying to help. That was my favorite part of the special. I really did like it. Um, that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next video. Okay, bye.